thinking that using the melody from Pure Imagination to stroke my genostalgitalia would keep me from noticing you spent 50 seconds exposing your four different logos. A ship on the sea, a man singing a song. I'm having Prince Eric flashbacks so hard I half expect to see a woolly dog and a stalking mermaid. Despite not putting any singing in the previews, the movie starts immediately with a song. And the amount of people who immediately turned and said, why the fuck is the kid from Love the Coopers singing right now? Is certainly worth a sip. Okay, but why is this guy in the engine room just holding Wonka's coat like that's part of his job description. And who threw his suitcase to him? Is this kid so loved that everyone on the ship covets holding his belongings? This kid spends precious coins on a map that shows restaurants he cannot afford to eat in. Wait, my pumpkin, you pay for it. Are pumpkins in France made of eggshell and filled with lima beans and raspberry jam? What the f*** is up with this pumpkin carnage? Jokering on a staircase covered in ice and snow like you have zero regard for your coccyx. Okay, but on the positive side, that gutter water somehow appears to be clean enough to drink out of. Not promoting that your movie stars a f***ing shape-shifting dragon. This movie hid all its best features. By this time tomorrow, you'll be frozen solid. The dude just pulled a boiling pot of hot chocolate out of his hat of holding, sir. I think he will be just fine. Welcome to Scrub It and Bleacher's guest house and laundry. So if your names are Scrub It and Bleacher, does that just doom you to a life of running a laundromat? Or do movies just think they can name characters whatever they want? I mean, I had a dentist named Dr. Fear, but he didn't have a partner named Dr. Drill It, so I think my point still stands. That's for my stew. <laughs> In here somewhere. Storing your dirty handkerchief chain in the same hat as your stew carrots. I understand the movie wants me to know without a doubt that Scrub It and Bleacher are villains, but murderous villains? What could they gain from killing a kid off the street? Even if Wonka read the contract, that wouldn't immediately mean their operations were ending. Noodle! Oh, noodle! Me trying to find the actual chow mein amongst the ludicrous amounts of cabbage that Panda Express adds somehow makes it into the script. Here we go, Mama. That is a chocolate bar, William. My name is Willy Wonka. And I have come to show you a marvelous morsel, an incredible edible, an unbeatable eatable. Reminding me that I should have probably had my own incredible edible to actually enjoy this insanity. Each of the three chocolate villains somehow both hear what's going on in the street and just happen to be in their office so they can all simultaneously come to the window for their big introductions. In this song, Wonka rhymes chocolate with socklets and pocklets. And I just like to say I find that to be a crocklet. And this whole song can eat a bag of chocolates. Everyone is really impressed with this chocolate floating magical stuff. Is magic normal in this world? Why is no one screaming about this being an act of the devil? Well, who wants to try one? The song this total stranger sang described a bug that laid an egg inside chocolate. And no one seemed to remember that. They are all far too happy to eat this thing. It's not just chocolate. It is. There's marshmallow. Okay, but when will someone describe the taste of the small bug's egg bursting squished testines into the mouth like a burst egg yolk with tiny half formed spike legs? And caramel. But, but it's salty. You salt with sweet freaks have been poisoning food since my buddy Tommy Tethers dipped a french fry in his Wendy's Frosty after a Little League game in 1987. And now I can't bite into a piece of chocolate without making sure it hasn't been dipped in ocean water first, you monsters. Hook em, boys! Equipping your police force with floating people hooks as if that's something you regularly have to deal with. Also, none of these officers were carrying these sticks walking in, but as soon as they cut to the rear shot, they all have one. I've looked over this bill, and it's this laundry section that confuses me most. It appears as if you are charging for each item, but you list five items of clothing and only have four itemized lines. And I refuse to believe that these money grubbers wouldn't have added a cost for each item considering they are literally charging per sock. Also, I find it hard to believe they actually had any time to do any laundry in the first place or would even want to when they can just charge whatever the hell they want for various sundries anyway. Not only that, but underwear? Underwear? Those English accents would be saying pants and you know it. And speaking of pants, why didn't you list his trousers anywhere? Charged for the vest and jacket, but didn't take the time to throw on some extra cost for his leg bags? And finally, and most importantly, no one should have handwriting this perfect. No one. And I'm Larry Chucklesworth. And I'm done with this movie. One moment of stupidity followed by endless regret. Hey, that's how my YouTube channel started. The movie never explains why this laundromat has this much business and is completely run on slave labor, but its owners still appear to be living in squalor. When this movie is a classic 30 years from now, I'm guessing it's the laundry montage song that people will remember most. Told you to read the small print. Urchins with a bad case of the told you so's. I focus my studies almost exclusively on chocolate. 
and sail it. Don't forget about all that time surviving on the ocean. Or did chocolate magically get you through the seven years on the seven seas? Everything else, I've relied on the kindness of strangers. Moochers. The greedy beat the needy every time, Mr. Wonka. The movie will eventually pretend that this isn't true. I have a selection of the world's finest ingredients right here in my travel factory. That is apparently somehow battery powered. And yes, I know it does all sorts of magical things, but my phone in 2024 won't last more than six hours. So I'm a bit distracted by the magical chocolate factory in a box that has built in mood lighting like it was designed by a Twitch streamer with too much time on their hands. Helps you see that faint ray of hope beyond the shadow of despair. That sounds disgusting. We lived on the river, just the two of us. If the movie is about to give us a backstory to the nightmare inducing boat ride from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, they can go right on and off down Baruka's garbage chute. Nothing will make that okay ever. Fucking worms on a goddamn carcass. And that poor decapitated chicken, Jesus. Gotta call my counselor now for fuck's sake. Having a built-in flashbacks position device in your magic powered chocolate suitcase. Also, who even took these pictures? And did they know they were creating a flip book? It's like this movie doesn't even care about existing in the real world. Is that all it is? Just a dream? Oh, oh, I see what's happening here. We are either already inside of Wonka's daydreaming or he and his mother got sick and died and this movie is his brain's final tailspin fantasy before death. Now the magic makes sense. Every good thing in this world started with a dream. Skip. I'll be right there beside you. I think you promise. Parent promises to be alive and positively influence the child's life only to die before that becomes possible, thereby creating a perpetual cycle of trauma cliché. My mom once promised that when I shared chocolate with the world, she'd be right there beside me. Breaking your promises. Oh, I know the silly loopholes the movie will play at the end to make this promise come true, but didn't Wonka already share his chocolate with those people he made float? Don't try and out loophole me, movie. Your loophole has a hole in its center. It's not a loophole at all, but a smaller loop with its own hole, and your loop is not whole at all. Here, try one. Why would anyone eat anything coming out of a strange guy's wooden crate outfitted with sketchy paraphernalia and a super sad dead parent slideshow? Then how would you like to have all the chocolate you can eat every day for the rest of your life. All the children watching are excited by this prospect and anyone with a brain is thinking about poor nutrition and stomach aches. Ask me again, but this time include a THC version and I'll probably change my mind. It's a great idea. But it'll never work. Of course it will. Eat your chocolate. So the chocolate Willie gave her is sparking a silver lining idea in her mind about how to get him out of here. And if that's the case, then Wonka basically drugged noodles for his own gain. And is he the villain in the story now? So the one time she dropped her guard was when this aristocrat came to the laundry. It was disgusting. Scene does not contain the late great Gilbert Gottfried explaining exactly how disgusting this aristocrat was. I got an idea. Is it to go back in time and return the chocolate you just stole from Noodle, you bastard? Temptation is very hard to resist. Movie takes 30 minutes to officially Rowan Atkinson. Racketeering invoices. You get your goddamn green shoes off the sofa, you hysterical heathen. That is leather. Why am I singing? Probably because you want me to be frustrated that this movie doesn't exist in the Schmigadoon extended universe. She'll be thankful for an ankle. Yes. And pleased to see your knees. Right. But if you want to make her sigh, tell me. Show her some thigh. Movie doesn't explain what to do if I want her to know my species and genus. Wonka is delightfully unaware in some ways and an absolute wreck of a human in others. Clearly the latter is in use, you dick. This automated laundry machine in no way gives these clothes long enough to be clean. Or dry. I'm now fully convinced Wonka is the charlatan I always knew him to be. I can't believe it worked. Fair point, Noodles. This works. They're not gonna let you just walk in there and milk it. Funny, that's the same thing my college girlfriend told me when we went to a dairy farm. Stop making everything dirty, you pervs. A single chocolate that perfectly mimics a night on the town. If I gave a sin every time Wonka has a convenient chocolate to deus ex chocolate himself into or out of a situation, I'd probably have to give about seven cents, which I am doing right now. That's the thing about flamingos. They need someone to show them the way. That is not, in any case, the thing about flamingos. Showing hairy female mammal nipples in your PG kids movie. Good evening, Miss uh... Abigail. And what if it were a male giraffe? Movie, mm, what then? Would your custard filled chocolates contain a very male protein mixture? Hmm? This giraffe enclosure somehow contains no giraffe toys, giraffe food, giraffe water, or most notably giraffe poop. You wanna give it a go, Noodle? Wonka means for Noodle to scritchy scratch the chin of the giraffe, but is also here to milk the giraffe, and you'd think that he'd be more specific about what Noodle is meant to do so she doesn't grab a teat without proper training. Nothing rhymes in Noodle. Denying the existence of my doodle of a a feudal poodle canoodling with a strudel. Don't you judge me. Doesn't matter. Oh, go on. Exchanging any form of conversation and direct eye contact while milking a goddamn giraffe. Your hands are on its teats, man. Focus on the task ahead and let's wrap up this extremely odd memory that we all share now. We don't have long until that guard comes toodle. 
Noodle. Sure, but is the front guard going to leave his post to go check each of the animal enclosures? Is it just one overnight security guy in this zoodle noodle? Just so we're keeping track here, Wonka is not okay with stealing milk, but a massive cluster of balloons is just fine. Got it. Move on. Also, stealing some balloons, just so you can defy the laws of physics and piss off Archimedes and the zoo balloon merchant, who for some reason left an entire batch of inflated helium balloons out in the cold overnight, all in one swoop. I guess the flamingos were inspired to fly away because of two humans and balloons, and that is dumb. Also, it's pretty clear that these two death-wishy children are traveling via strained arm socket and helium all the way to the dome in the distance. How did they manage to make it all the way there without floating too low or sailing too high? No one cares but me, apparently. Okay, maybe you care too. We snarks have to stick together. You can sit by me and watch the rest of the movie if you are quiet. To be clear, I can talk. You can't. Okay, don't reply. That would break my rule. And do not crunch your popcorn so loudly. Chief, you know that fellow you wanted a word with? I just happened to see him so we could move the plot along. Peace, boss. I got a message for you, pal. Whoa! Did he just break solid ice with Wonka's face? How's his nose not gushing blood? But that's not the point. This is the point. Not now, Larry. Look, Abacus, Larry is just offering a comedic take on what you said by taking it literally and feigning obliviousness to what you really meant. It's called comedy. If you don't think it's funny, fine, but lay off the guy a bit, okay? Justice for cinema sense, I mean justice for Larry. And why do you smell a giraffe? Knowing what a giraffe smells like. The only way in is down a secret elevator and past the mistress of the keys. I'm sorry, am I supposed to believe all this blueprint's position was in the crooked accounting books? Why all this detail when you're just trying to chocolate fudge the numbers? It's an A, your first letter. I'm teaching you to read. Teaching someone to read a letter at a time via zipline. Will you marry me? I don't know, Colin. Aw, Colin and Barbara might not get married, but also, who the f*** are Colin and Barbara? And why am I meeting them an hour into this movie? Also, these two actors appeared in the same TV show in different seasons. Your task is to identify that show, which seasons they were in, figure out the difference between the two numbers, find a word with that many letters that sums up this movie, and then be the first to post that word in the comments. Fastest time wins. Your time begins now. Wonka is now distributing untested pharmaceuticals that make you grow hair, gain confidence, and dance like you're in a Broadway show. And I do not believe I'm overreacting when I say this man should be arrested and executed immediately. Real quick, let me just add that Wonka is also okay with stealing various outfits to blend in with the community while he makes everyone an addict. But again, stealing milk is a big no-no. To be fair, this chart was f***ed the moment it had 13 days of data on a document meant to measure a calendar month. Facing a lifelong commitment on the effects of a specially prepared bean. There are a lot of kicking people in this scene, and it makes me think about all the talented people out there, unlike these two. And that makes me wonder if this day on set they just casually mentioned to the two waiter extras that they'd be in a dance number and no one bothered to find out if they had rhythm or experience. This woman can listen to her ankles, she's dancing so hot. This guy pulled all of his groin out for this kick. This guy gets a pass, he's old, but these two? Totally out of rhythm and just hopping around like it doesn't matter? This man cannot have children anymore, and these two can't be bothered to do more than hop. Ah, sudden Hugh Grant is an abomination of God and all that is holy. During this Oompa Loompa song, Luffy will bend over and fart with the smoke coming out of his Oompa hole, transitioning the scene to exposition. And sometimes I'm really glad 4D theaters never really caught on. And other things this movie will not answer. Why does Wonka carry a cane sometimes, but other times not? Why is one cocoa bean so f***ing huge? I mean, it looks like a cocoa pod to me, but whatever. You know that shop? The one you've been dreaming of? purchasing someone's dream shop before they do. We'll all be free, as free as flamingos. I swear to fucking God, if I see this as some sort of bumper sticker designed to inspire people to fearlessly fly out of their situation after seeing a human lift off with balloons, I will, I'll, I'll release my own bumper sticker that will say, I send flamingos. Fucking flamingos. But it's gonna cost you a lot more chocolate. This whole police chief eats a bunch of chocolate and gets very fat and oh, isn't it funny when fat people fall down and can't fit through doors and shit storyline is very, very bad. Here we go, mama. Baz Luhrmann's Wonka Elvis. Choosing Mr. Carson on a bicycle is the preferred energy source for your fancy candy shop. Clouds are made of cotton candy and not chocolate? What is this sh Eating the store components and drinking milk from the giant chocolate cow sounds like fun on day one at Wonka's. But by day 37, I'm highly doubting there are enough guidelines in existence that would keep this entire place from being one big bowl of chocolate listeria. And uh, don't forget to eat your basket. Are you also giving instructions on how to wash the melting chocolate out of his wool coat? Because it seems like everyone in the store will need some tips and tricks for laundry. Nobody eat the flowers! Uh... Why not? Despite everyone arriving at different times and eating different things, the entire store comes down with Dr. Suzita's hair at the precise moment when the movie needs its third act crisis. It appears that the chocolates have been poisoned. 
Poisoned? Poisoned? I am with you, patrons. Poisoned? That seems extreme. Altered, temporarily enhanced, or maybe even tampered with would be better, but poisoned should be saved for moments when everyone here may die. And maybe they will, but the movie does not show us the body count, so pick a lane, movie. Are we killing children or not? This is what you get for mustaching my daughter. Yep, because murder in a store full of strangers after they cause you to grow facial hair is a normal reaction. Every good thing in this world started with a dream. And most of the bad things, too. I'm just saying social media was someone's dream. And Agent Orange. And the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Checking out, are we? Yeah, was it the forlorn apologetic singing I was doing while wandering the frozen bridges of France that gave it away? Kill it! Kill it with fire! Look, where Slugworth shook my hand. His ring left a mark. On your fucking palm? How do you leave a ring impression on someone's palm while shaking hands? Was Slugworth wearing the ring on his palm? Run that back. Okay, he conspicuously takes his glove off, has his ring toward the middle of his pinky, and turned inward, all in an attempt to try and sell this bullshit plot clue. And it still barely looks like it's even pressing against the side of Wonka's right hand. The side is not the palm, even with all the work you did to try and get this convenient reveal, you charlatans. This is to keep you here. My friend, Mr. Slugworth, doesn't think nasty little urchins like you should be out on the streets lowering the tone. <laughs> Olivia Colvin could do fucking anything. What a beast. They keep that ledger in a vault. Guarded by a corrupt cleric. And 500 chocoholic monks. All of these idiots are precariously perched on the piss poor pine of the pigeon poopy pen to pander over plans to prevail against the persistent perpetrators. Get down from there and talk in the streets like civilized people. Mr. Cocoa Bean. Also, movie takes another hour to Rowan Atkinson after waiting 30 minutes to officially Rowan Atkinson in the first place. Movie doesn't know how to Rowan Atkinson correctly. I need the zoo. It's an emergency. Pushing through to the escaped animal department now. But he never said it was an escaped animal, Lottie. Are you trying to ruin everything? Movie cuts away before I get to see how they navigate these stairs with their giant giraffe box. Nothing about this flamingo fiasco seems to be on purpose. So the movie is telling me that the flamingos aided in saving the day all on their own? I send flamingos! Because all that's down here is just a bunch of stupid old chocolate. Plot convenient temper tantrums that went to the O for f**k's sake school of aiming at things. Sole heir to the family fortune, or so I thought. But nine months later... Expositing your villainous backstory for no reason whatsoever, even though you aren't in a Bond movie. What are we gonna do, Willie? If Noodle and Wonka strange brew themselves out of the situation by eating all the chocolate, I'm giving back all the sins. Putting a glass skylight in your hidden chocolate murder chamber. Deep breath now. Forcing me to spend the next scenes holding my breath because I want to see if I could survive this particular scenario. Honestly, this one isn't too bad, but holding your breath in the abyss when they swim to the next hatch? That sucked. So here's another sin for reminding me about my limited lung capacity. Car shrunk. <sighs> hey, Noodle! When in the time between escaping certain death and turning in the three chocolatiers did they have time to work out the plan and signal for this coup de gras? How did they even know all the chocolate would be pumped down there? Or that it's connected to this fountain? Why the hell are the secret chocolate pipes connected to the water fountain? This asshole who just casually erases Wonka's ghost mom. Aw, Willie is sharing old chocolate from his pocket. That is so sweet. Who cares it was recently soaked by water and chocolate and probably so, so, so much sweat. This is the chocolate made by a dead mother's hands for her sad orphan child with magical candy powers. Eat up while you sob, you bastards. You found my mom? Yep, and they waited until after the part where you could have died to tell you about it because friendship. If I'm gonna share my chocolate with the world, I'm gonna need more than a shop. I'm also gonna need some slave labor. You in? Thinking you hadn't humiliated him enough during the movie, so you gave him the job of introducing your end credit character epilogues that you should have just put in the damn movie. Oh, you guys made me eat. Standard form of contract. Don't talk to me about contracts, Wonka. I use them myself. They're strictly for suckers. Tastes like, like strawberries. Lisa! Friedrich! Luisa! Kurt! Brigitte! Martha! Good evening. So you're the funny little man who's been following me. Oh, don't be see. I was just hoping we could have a cozy little drink together. They are ready to put 150 grand in my pocket. Good for me, that. It's bad for you. Is there any in this route with authority to treat with me? And if I'm correct, Noodle could be in grave danger. Well, come on, Wonka. Spit it out. Produce your owl pellet of wisdom. There's no time. I gotta get back. We have to go back, Kate. And you! 
take them dungarees off you, you peasant. The puffy waffy. I love you, Raggy. <laughs>